Me too. I'm so happy to join your live because we confirmed it several weeks ago that we yeah. need to get together. But unfortunately, because of all of the life is life, that is why we just meet today. And I want to say, you know what, firstly, I know that many people, they celebrate Christmas today. That mm -hmm. is why, guys, Merry Christmas to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for all the people watching, Merry Christmas to you all, guys. So um, you were a little bit tired and sick these last days, so that's why we couldn't schedule the live. How are you feeling now? Um, thank you so much. I'm feeling much better today. <clears throat> but I'm still a little bit, you know, under the weather. I hope everything will be fine. I'm going to get it fast to come very soon. I guess the, the sound is not good. I'm going to use my earphones, okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. I think it's it's better if you use your So let's check it out. Is it better? Yeah, now it's much better. Sure. Uh-huh, because I just really hurt myself. It was the echo. Yeah, I hope that I'm gonna uh, ha get, get a fast recovery soon because everybody is looking forward to the holidays. I wanna be, you know, like a full of beans this holiday. That's great. That's great, actually. Um, uh, Anna, your name is Anna, and I called you Viscana. That's right. and, and I'm so sorry about this because I didn't know that. It's that okay. Was Don't worry. Energy. Don't worry. It's okay. Yeah. So, Anna, you you are a teacher, and you're now living in Russia, right? Right. I'm from Russia. I live in Russia. Now I'm living in Russia and just currently based here. Yeah, that's right. Great. So, uh, you're teaching people there. English as a second language, right? Exactly. And uh, what group age are you dealing with? You teach adults or teenagers? Or... That's right. That's right. So I used to teach kids and teenagers, but I guess it was about like a six or seven years ago, and now I do prefer to teach adults. It depends, of course, uh, but I love it. Why? Because we can discuss various topics with adults. So, uh, Anna, you've been teaching English, as you told me before, for 13 years, right? That's right. Um, what do you think now, after all this time you've spent in teaching English as a second language, uh, what do, you, uh, do you still have the same passion for teaching as the first time, or what changed? What are the conclusions that you've come up to? So, we know that everything is getting changed. Of yeah, 100%, sure. right? And when I compare me, you know, with the teacher who I was, you know, like uh, 13 years ago, I can say that because of the experience which I got during all of this, you know, like a time, this time, I can say that I started being mm, more immersed into English, and of course, I got it more passion. Because I know what can I do, I mean, just which kind of tools I can use to teach adults or, I mean, uh, in general students, right? And when I see that my students usually get results pretty fast, they enjoy what they do. I mean, so they enjoy the whole process. Of course, I'm also inspired by the thing. So I always inspire my, you know, motivate my students, but I also motivated by the whole process, all of the classes we have. I think it works, you know, the other way around, always. Yeah, that's great. Actually, teaching is a job where you can, you can inspire and you can get inspired. Sometimes you get inspired with your students, and uh, that's, that's right. pretty cool. And the more you are creative, the more you create a great environment for learning, um, the more benefits you get from, from this job. Um, on the other hand, other teachers, they don't take it this way. Um, they struggle with the job because they always use the same methods. They repeat the same thing they do every day. So this creates huge problems, actually, to them. So, Anna, let me just have a comment. I see some someone... Um, this, the, sound is, the sound is bad. You can hear I me, can guys? I can hear you pretty well. I you can, can hear, hear you well. Yes. Yeah, sure. I hope so that you heard. This, this one of the comments they're saying that they're having comments about your accent. I don't like to speak about accent because for me it's something, you know, natural, biological. Everyone has his accent. But uh, for you, Russian people, I, I think that when you hear someone from Russia speak, you can tell that he's, he's really Russian. But uh, that's not the case for your accent. I see that... When someone hears you speaking, it sounds like you're not really Russian. 
<laughs> you know, just got lots of compliments, you know, just lots of positive feedback that when they, people, they catch the live, you know, the live stream with other teachers, they always ask me, like, Anna, I'm from the US. I said, no, I used to, you know, travel there. I used to spend, not, not really, okay, honestly, not much time there, but I used to work there. You know, uh, you um, I was a trip. US? Not exactly US? living. No, 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 no. It was, I had like a several business trips. You know, I went abroad. I used to went abroad, go abroad when I worked as a translator, as the assistant of deputy general director from the chemical plant. So I used to work in the chemical plant. And I helped my bosses, you know, to conduct some negotiations. And I can definitely say that that trip, you know, that traveling abroad and um, working as a translator in the U.S. really helped me to improve my accent. Of course, now I, can, I, I know that, that if you, for example, catch always be in the same environment abroad, I mean, in English-speaking countries, unfortunately, not exactly the skills of yours can be decreased, but something happened with your accent. Something. Yeah. I mean, if you don't improve it by yourself, yeah, so you should work on it. you can just feel it, you know, some moments and people, they can realize where are you from. I mean, an average. So they can say, oh, I guess you're Russian, you're Ukrainian, you're like, uh, uh, I don't know, from India, for example, right? India or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But in general, I can say that usually I have like a, some positive feedback and thank you so much for you guys. I mean, for you teachers, because I also do the live stream with different teachers. I mean, from all over the world and with English speaking guys. And that is why I can say it's one of the best way to improve your speaking skills and your accent. Of course, if you're crazy about it. I mean, accent really doesn't matter. I mean, it's much better to pronounce words properly. And if you can do it, everybody will understand you, right? Yeah. But accent is just, it's a thing, I can say. So you need to, you know, proud of it. Yeah, you need to be proud of your accent. You need to be proud of where you're from and how do you speak right. and your clothes, your traditions, everything about you should be proud of it. And um, yeah, you answered one of the questions I was about to ask you about the accent. Some people, they think that accent is something that it's really it big. is learning, <laughs> it is the challenge. It is a challenge for them. The challenge for them is not to learn the language, uh, but to learn or to acquire this accent or to have this uh, certain accent they have in mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, as Anna said, as you said, it's, it's pretty important. It's more important to be accurate, to speak and to be understood. Uh, it's more important to have people understand you and you can communicate, you can speak your ideas, you can express freely. That's what is important. Um, well, I, I would like to start with uh, the most popular question that people are asking now. They say, we don't have time. Um, we are busy working. We have other things to do. And uh, the methods that are available now on the Internet, that are available on, online, um, they're not for us because we don't have that time to spend on courses. To... Is there ways we can use <laughs> to boost our learning, to learn like very quickly uh, without having to spend our money on courses or something. Uh, using, of course, the online resources we have now online. I mean, YouTube. You know what? I, I can't agree, you know, just really, I couldn't, <laughs> of course, I couldn't agree more about the uh, various resources which we have nowadays. So the net, thank God we have the net, right? And you can like a cherry up something, uh, different courses, why not different platforms, applications, I mean, social networks to improve your um, language, I mean, your English. But I want to say, Anna, see, what about the course? I get my, yeah. my earphones because some people are putting comments here they're saying they can't hear me just one minute okay no problem take your time i'll just use the earphones and see if it can work this time Okay, I don't know if it's clear now or not. Can you hear me, guys? I can hear you well. And I heard you well before, before you just <laughs> catch your, your... You don't hear me now? 
this. I can show you. Okay. So you guys, please just stand some up or just a plus or minus if you hear well or you don't hear well. Yes, well. tell us, guys, in the comments if you can hear us, please. So we should know. <laughs> yeah, they say it's better. Okay, that's very nice. Yeah. So what about the courses? Um, so you asked about that people, they don't have like a, not all maybe, right? To, um, you know, they do some courses to do some tests or whatever. I can agree with it because I think it depends. So when I hear, you know, that, that or I just get them a lot of messages, you know, like lots of people DM me and they say like, I want to learn English fast. Hmm, it's okay. I want to learn English fast as well. Unfortunately, so the, there is no magic bullet, no yeah. magic pill. That's why, guys, you should know that it's a pretty long life process. I mean, you can start speaking English pretty fast, even if you, you have like a A1 plus level, for example. I mean, you can express your thoughts and emotions, have a uh, pretty small vocabulary, but whatever. So native speakers will understand you. Other people can understand you. It's okay. But it doesn't matter that you shouldn't improve, that you shouldn't boost your vocabulary or other skills. So you need to do that. What about courses? I guess it's some excuses when people say, say that they don't have enough time to study something. Because, uh, come on, so it's, it's really convenient. It's pretty convenient to, I mean, switch on your laptop after your working day, uh, even though you have only 10 or 15 minutes, and start just uh, do something, some of the tests from one of the course. It usually takes 10 or 15 minutes, but you should do it regularly. I mean, just every single day, you should repeat, firstly, some of the tasks which you studied the day before, and today plus one more test. I think it's all about excuses. I can say that I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm the laziest person in the world. It's true. I feel it. And I just really feel my students. I know that it's... You know, you need to really make always efforts to study something new. It, unfortunately, it doesn't have a like at once, unfortunately, right? For me, for you, for, the, for other guys. But I, mean, I think it's all about your, you know, the preferences for sure. If you check it out, the, some of the material, some article, you listen to the podcast on the topic where you are re really into, it's going so fast or faster than you were expected. So that is, what about the platform application? I can say that um, it's a thing, the first one, okay? What about me? I used to uh, be one of the participants of the, uh, what is it, Tandem, I guess so, but, so it failed. Uh, why? I found one of the speakers, you know, English-speaking guy, and we're still chatting. So that is why for me it's enough. I mean, having one speaking partner for one application, like a tandem, I talk, a hello. Uh, so there are various of them. Guys, you can Google, just find the list of them and use which is really suitable for you, okay? Uh, so I found one of the speaking partners for one of the platform, but other guys who I usually chat with, they are everybody, okay? So everybody is from the Instagram. Yeah. Everybody's from Instagram. Well, you talked about this point of partners and uh, how we can find partners online. Uh, sometimes people, they get confused whether they should find someone online or they should have someone in their real life. Which one do you think is more beneficial? To find someone near to you, you know, someone in your family or maybe at school or at your work <laughs> or online? It doesn't work. Online. For sure. So 100% online. Why? Because you have a big choice, right? So you can choose whatever you want. Uh, you can join various communities. I mean, on Instagram or on other, on other social networks. I can say that it's not a problem nowadays to find the speaking party. And I know that some of the teachers on Instagram, they also offer, you know, they have the option, like, uh, guys, if you would like to have the speaking party, like, DM me, please. I have the students of mine who would like to chat with you. So that's it. I think it's uh, not really a big problem. Yeah. Today. Sure. Now, nowadays, uh, guys, you have no excuses to to find partners. You can't tell me I can't find a partner to speak to, because uh, nowadays we have multiple choices. They're here on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere you go. There are people. I mean, millions of people interested in mm -hmm. practicing their English, and especially now, you may find problem to practice. 
uh, German or to practice uh, French or something. But English nowadays is is widely uh, in all, all all over the world. So it's pretty okay. easy to find someone speaking English and practice with them. Uh, well, Anna, we got a we got another question here. Uh, people, when they start at the beginning of their learning process, they struggle with grammar and they say, I'm a beginner, I don't have enough vocabulary. Um, should I really care at this stage of being a beginner? Should I care, really care about grammar? Should I study the basics grammar, or yes, something? No. Or I, I should forget so. about it and then come back to it? I guess not exactly forget about the grammar. Of course, uh, if you would like to sound like a well-educated person, you need to know some rules. I mean, just even though like a simple tense, for example, right? Simple, present simple, past simple, maybe future, okay, present continuous, because it's mostly used for, uh, you know, just clarifying some moments in the future. <laughs> but I think so the most important is just, of course, to boost vocabulary. Yeah, so at, how at this stage, yeah. so at this stage of being a beginner, very early age, vocabulary. very early stage, you should focus mainly on vocabulary, developing your vocabulary. And after that? Not many only, but it's one of the most. Of course, if you don't have enough vocabulary, you don't know how to yes, like name sure. this subject or that, how you can explain something, it's impossible. Okay, maybe it's possible. I mean, hypothetically, hypothetically, we can say that just using your body language or mimic some gestures, it's okay. You can draw yeah. something, it's okay. I mean, you always can. Uh, solve the problem, right? If you just uh, the smart person, I guess so. But if you don't have enough vocabulary, unfortunately, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be like, of course, you. I, I guess you're going to lose lots of force to explain something. Yeah. So that is why, guys, try to catch as many new words, but not separately. So you always need to use them uh, in the context, right? Try to, I don't know, like uh, the study the patterns. So patterns really help you. So you shouldn't just really care maybe the translation of it, but when you try to fix some patterns in your head, it's going to be easier to make the monologue or dialogue and so on. Uh, Anna, people are saying now, learners, they struggle with this uh, vocabulary. They struggle with it. They say, well, we learn vocabulary. We learn too many vocabulary, but we end up forgetting mm -hmm. everything. Um, is there something, apart from learning words in context, we can do in order to keep these vocabulary in our minds? Um, so what is the best way, I guess, and I always recommend just do it, uh, my students, okay? I always recommend my students do it because uh, I do it as well. When you get some new vocabulary, okay, let it be a word, phrasal verb, um, I don't know, any words, it's just phrase or idiom. idiom. Yes. Idiom, okay, so let it be idiom. So today, for example, I conducted the class, you know, in the first part of the day, and I try to um, make my student to remind some of the idioms which we studied before, you know, many classes ago, and every single time I would like her just to work him, just make step back, right, and try to remind something but sometimes it happens life is life so we can just get a brain pain for example right and yeah. if it's so hard to I can hear to, um, you know the some of the phrases which I said several seconds before <laughs> what is that yeah yeah sorry it was just okay. uh, the echo <laughs> yeah there's the echo yes okay yes go ahead um, what do you want? yeah and if I would like or try to remind some of the idioms, I always give the context is the first one. And she can really remind it faster, for example. Um, it was just one of an example, how we can say that something is really annoying. For example, it's so the temperature is getting low. It's really annoying. If you check it out, my stories, guys, you can see that it's minus 40 degrees Celsius today in the place where I'm currently based. Oh. And I'm not happy about that. <laughs> just yeah. really, it's so cold. So the one thing you would like to do is just stay home, you know, cover the blanket, drink cocoa, just a cup of tea or coffee. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just really. 
Um, and I asked him the question, so what is another way to say that it's really annoying? Yeah, you can say, oh, it's just a crap or it's a trash or something. You don't like something. And so you just really mad at it. Um, she was like a thinking. She gave several, like three another options or three another variants. I said, yeah, that's very nice. And she made her sentences with all of the, uh, the idioms which we studied before. But she forgot one of it. And I said, what about the where out? Do you remember? she said yes so it wears me out okay so it all depends you know from the context if you know the exact situation where you can use a new idiom a new phrase it doesn't yeah. matter just the vocabulary new lexis so context always help you and i also just say when we read some articles and of course there are many new words especially if you try to like uh, jump from one of the level to another uh you like look through the article and you say, oh my God, what does that look like? I don't understand. So a bunch of new lexes. But when you start to read it, guess. I mean, context always help you, helps you to guess what is the whole, like the whole idea, for example, or why we use these words exactly at this very, you know, the moment or the very place. It always helps. So that yeah. is why I try, guys, use the context. I mean, separately, of course, it, it, it it never works, never works to try to memorize words separately. Try to make some associations with this word, especially about your life, okay? Not about some abstract, random people, about you. Uh, just one more example about the words me out. So today it's bloody cold. I wouldn't like to go outside, you know, and the temperature is still, you know, uh, decreasing. Oh, my God, it's terrible. And it wears me out, it wears okay? Me out, yeah. So that's sure. why. So uh, there also there's um, there is one of the ways that some people use is uh, for for separate words. I mean for vocabulary, separate words. I mean if mm -hmm. someone is learning vocabulary related to food, uh, so in this case it can be a picture of it. Okay, a picture of the oh, of yeah, the equivalence true. of the word. So pictures mm -hmm. also helps you learn the words and keep them that's in your right. mind because uh, our minds they all the time associate words with with, their, with the pictures. If you have a yeah. picture of the words you're studying, it will be easier to, to remember it. I did the same. You know, I used yeah. a lot of flashcards and pictures when I used to teach kids. Yeah. Because so I think I it's really work started. also for adults. Pictures, they may And adults, work. yeah, the, the same. That's yeah. right, the same. So you can use it. So adults, I can say, they really like such tasks more than kids. You know, no one just really would like to be, you know, the focus all of this series talking about about all, all the politics, you know, or the medicine or the situation about COVID-19 and so on. So people would like to have some instinct. That's why just if you guys, the teachers use flashcards and different pictures for adults. And uh, also, Anna, I think it's uh, one of the things I used is focusing on the interest. Uh, sometimes yeah. I ask my students about their interest. What are they interested in? So if I find out that they're interested in some, uh, like, anims or interested in sport or something, I try to use words, I try to use context examples related to that interest. So mm -hmm. for them, it's a source of motivation. If you're speaking to them about something they like, so they may be more interested in mm -hmm. what they're learning. And this is also Absolutely. helps. Yeah. So Absolutely. guys, all the time, look for, for things that you are interested in. Try to develop... Uh, your vocabulary in the things you're interested in it will be much easier. That's right. Uh -huh. um, so well, people, Anna, they are really inspired, you know, just chat about some things which uh, they really into. They would you like to share lots of, you know, like uh, some details, which I am really not into. But when you try to explain me, I'm completely immersed into the conversation. And I try to make them to speak more. And yeah, that's right. So you can choose any topic which you're into and try to, you know, develop your speech using new lexes. It's, it's easier. That's great. So, um, Anna, we have people now, they say, well, in, we're on a level where we can understand, where we can, like, mainly understand 100% of what the native speakers are saying. When we watch a movie, we can understand, like, 90%. Ooh. But the problem is when it comes to speaking, when it comes to trying to write or something, there comes the problem. We can't speak. We can't produce, uh, like, express our ideas. Even if we speak for some time, uh, we wouldn't be able to carry on the discussion or the conversation. 
what is the problem here? Why do many learners struggle with speaking? They can't understand. Maybe some of them, they can write. Some of them, they can write, they can produce, but yeah, yeah, when it comes to speaking, so they can they, read, they fail. Yeah. They, they can read the articles, various materials, watch the videos on the high level. We can say, yeah, upper intermediate, advanced, proficiency level, so they can understand. But, yeah, it's true. So they have some struggle with uh, speaking. And I guess it's one of the problems and the many of it, some psychological moment because they are really care. They're just really afraid of – they always think what other people think about them. <laughs> But, guys, so here's the, the really important moment, and you should just keep in your head, that – So people, they really don't care about you, okay? <laughs> so they can just think something about like, oh, she just used this word, maybe not correctly. Um, and like in two or three minutes, they will forget about you. So that's why I don't care about it, okay? So everybody make mistakes. And I can say one of the most important things, one of the tip or suggestion for all of the you know, language learner is that don't, uh, like you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. Everybody make it. Everybody makes it. See? Yeah. <laughs> I just, just, just said sure. it not correctly, sure. yeah? Like and it's okay. I just want to show you what is that. I mean, I'm in the English studio, but I also make mistakes. I don't say that, oh, guys, you should always make it. Just relax. Don't care about that. No, I said that if you already made the mistake, so try not do it. I mean, just make it next day, okay? So you need to fix the problem. Then you, like, I keep going and try and not make it next time. But yeah, it's just on a psychological moment. And that's it. Yeah, because Anna, we, we care about being perfect most of the time. Yeah. We don't want to sound like you know, poor in our language. So Always. when we want mm -hmm. to speak, the first thing we think about is to be 100% accurate, to be 100% correct, to pronounce all the words correctly. So this takes our attention so we don't focus really when we speak mm -hmm. it's because we're all the time afraid of making mistakes it's more important you know to share your thoughts and ideas with people that's it you know try to spread the information so try to not really focus on the mistakes it's okay so if another person or just other people they just got what you're saying or just now for example or talking about it's uh, much more important because you just got the communication. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that maybe you used another word, not correct word, but they understood, they have already understood it, it's okay. It's fine, yes. So uh, this is for, for the speaking, and people when they speak, when they speak uh, there is another problem, apart from, uh, from being afraid of making mistakes, there's the problem mm -hmm. of, um, some people, they, they think that, their pronunciation or their accent is not that good. So what prevents them from speaking is not that the, the, they're afraid from making mistakes. They're afraid to sound like yeah. uh, not like native speakers. So they want to be like native speakers so that they can speak. It's a very good wish. I mean, if you really would like to sound like a native speaker, it's not bad. It's just really good, but you should work on it, okay? Um, just in comparison with, so let's try to compare just two, uh, two people, okay? So the one man, he knows everything. He has really good lexis, okay? Oh, I mean, just the vocabulary in general, okay? So he can read super, super, like a duper articles. So he watches videos and he understands like 99%, but he really, he's really afraid of, uh, you know, just making mistakes when he speaks. And he always keeps silent or he chats really seldom. And another person, okay, who uh, has, for example, elementary or intermediate level, maybe he's not really confident um, on like a various fields of his life, again, just speaking as well, but he tries to speak, you know, on a regular basis, and he really pushes himself to speak more. So who gonna be, get the, the best, best result? I think the second one yeah. in speaking. For sure. So that is why, guys, don't be afraid, okay? Uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes. You shouldn't. I mean, just accept. So you should admit that, yeah, sometimes you can be wrong. Just using some uh, words or just making some mistakes. Just admit it, and that's it. Try to fix the problem, and that keep going. Yeah, for sure. That's it. So another thing that people are 
asking question about it and uh, the thing we discussed at the very beginning uh, about the accent now some people they want their, their desire to have uh, a great accent a perfect accent that like they think that the accent is what really matters is is the, mm -hmm. the 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 thing that is important in learning english is the accent so if you can speak like americans if you can speak like british people then your english is bad if you pronounce for example uh, water not water some people they think you're bad <laughs> they think you're not good enough just because you pronounce a word uh, but and these ideas we we can we, can, we hear it all the time uh, Unfortunately, what do you think about that? So, I'm going to repeat it again. So, guys, if you're really crazy about accents, you would like to sound like a native speaker, it's okay. It's just super great thing. Just do it. It's not a problem. But it doesn't mean that if you or somebody else like us speaks with a British accent, it, but it, it depends. I mean, so we know that in different, you know, regions of UK, so people, they speak differently. <laughs> and yeah. what is the, the, the best, the perfect accent? I don't know, because so there are a bunch of them, okay? Austin, I mean, Australian accent, American accent, and also if we're talking about American accent, it also depends on the region of the state where people currently based and live. Come on. If you're going to listen uh, to the person who lives, who's a, an English-speaking guy, right, who lives in Texas, he's going to sound really different, you know, from the person who lives in New York City, for example, in New York State. Completely yeah. different. Yeah, That's like, a, okay. I mean, so if yeah. you would like to choose one of the accents, just choose it. It's not a problem, and it doesn't. Okay, I will just give you an example because in Russian we also have not exactly accent but dialects. Okay, we have different dialects, um, and how the people they pronounce different words also like words differently. Um, instead of okay, I will just show you the the one of like two examples. Okay, so the word cow. In Russian, pronounced like a, I, I'm used to pronouncing it like a karova, but uh, can you hear the ah ah ah? It's a cow. Cow. You know, like a domestic animal, cow, right? No, no. In how Russian, do you pronounce it? Karova. 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 Ah, karova. Yes, okay. it's it's my spelling, okay? But some people in in the, in another regions they pronounce it like a korova, and it's okay. Korova, yes. Yeah, it, it, so uh, it, so they used to they're used to pronouncing it like this yeah. because of the region, okay? Because of their parents, grandparents, you know, they pronounce the same, and it's okay. It means so usually, like some linguists, they say that Russian people they can they speak to Russian, okay? Like a traditional Russian, you know, and unique Russian language. Yeah, unique it's Russian language means like the world. which I place your country? You can't yeah, find same. you can't find a country where people speak the same way, even. Sometimes small mm -hmm. countries, you find like, I don't know, there's the example of, um, of Switzerland. I think in Switzerland, there are many, many languages, small country, right. but still they speak many languages. So, mm -hmm. and many accents, many dialects, even uh, in my country, people speak different accents. We have, we may refer to this as pen in one place and in another, we may uh, refer to it differently. So it's pretty normal, yeah. I think. That's right. So I can say that I'm mad about American accent <laughs> and I try to sound like Americans. I know that I have some, like, the problems with the pronunciations of some words, but I still try to do it. Because, and I feel okay because I'm not a native speaker, but I like how it sounds like. Oh, my God, I'm just crazy about the Ellen show. I like the way how she speaks. I really love how the, I mean, American actors, they speak. It's for something just super duper <laughs> love it so much that is why i if i would like to improve my accent i always watch the american movies tv shows you know i'm completely immersed into you know just finding some of the videos on youtube it's one yeah. of the best way because listening and speaking they're connected connected completely connected uh, and if you just listen a lot would you recommend Excuse something, me? TV show or something, something American? Yeah, sure. Because we have I many, uh... you. you don't, okay, guys, if you also would you like to improve your listening skills and you want to improve your, I don't know, maybe also just said yeah. an American accent just said it. So one of it is the uh, Ellen show. 
Oh, yeah. That's so a Ellen, great one. Ella, Ellen DeGeneres, she is like a fantastic woman. Wow, she's an amazing TV host. Yeah. She's a great comedian. She's an amazing yeah. actress. Amazing, She's super, yes. I don't know, like, a, they, they, they're such a bright person. And that is why, and the show is, uh, I can't say that it's unique. I can because in the U.S. you can find, I mean, just on in this country. So there are, there are the same, like, uh, TV shows they produce, still produce, right? Um, but I don't know. I just love her. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to say. And you can not only catch some interviews with celebrities, right? Uh, I can say that Ellen always tries to entertain her audience, you know, people who usually come to see her and celebrities, so she plays games. It's, it's an amazing. And what if they, and uh, different activities I also use in my, uh, on, on my classes. Yeah. That's For example, good. like the game Five Second Rule, it's such a great thing, just really an amazing play. When you have, when you should give three options, just the three answers, Okay, the, you should answer the question and give like a three options mm -hmm. or three versions, and you have only five seconds. It really helps your brain. What's the name, What's the name of the, the game again? Okay, one second. Five second rule. Five second rule. Yeah. Um, yes, try it, guys. I think it's cool. Yeah, for example, the question can be like, uh, just name three things you usually do in the morning, and you, need, you have only five seconds, guys, okay? And that is why you need to really concentrate and just give the yeah. answer. It's like, okay, I just, I just, okay, 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 I just, <laughs> what is that? You, usually students, yeah. they can be a little bit confused, like, what should you do? Five seconds only? But it's pretty simple, you know? Like, but, and you push I push your mind. Teeth, yeah. I pray, I grab, uh, I, I, I grab a glass of water, so that's it. It's just pretty fast. But sometimes, you know, people, they are confused. It's so, it's not easy to answer the question like in, in your in your language, you know, because some question they look at. So you never just expect it to get that question. Yeah, I think it's it cool. will be funny. So I'll try it. I'll try it. That's good. So I'll try it. Uh, we have some questions here. Let's get some of them, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do you think about that? How, How can, can I, I improve my... my English pronunciation? Is there anything uh, like practical or something we can do? Listen more and use method shadowing. Okay, I use it because when you, you listen that, to shadowing, someone, shadowing method, yeah. we hear a lot about yeah. this uh, method. Yeah, that's right. I use it. I use it, and I can say that it really works because when you listen to someone and try to copy pronunciation, it's it's you it works with different options. You know, pronunciation, intonation, accent. So it really works. You can just see the difference. But what is really the, the most important also, you need to make a record, okay? So the first time when you try to pronounce this phrase without listening to the person and after, okay, two records of yours, make it on your phone, for example, and you can compare. So what's the difference between the first record and the second one? Yeah. So this shadowing method is really... Uh is really useful. So you try to like copy all about yeah. what's what you are trying to, to shadow. All about it. Like the accent, the how the intonation, pronunciation, everything about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're that's right. It. Okay, let's see if we get so guys, if you have questions, there is a question box. Put your questions there. Mm -hmm. Ellen, right? Yeah, Ellen. Ellen, that's right. So her name is Alan DeGeneres. Okay, this is a question I think, I don't know if uh, if Abd Hamid is asking me or you, but I think he's asking you. Could you tell us what? about your first time you start learning English? Your experience, your I, personal experience with English. Okay, um, I started learning English when I was five. My mother, I think, I just really appreciate it, so that my mom found the uh, kindergarten um, with English classes. The first experience was well, just, you know, we play games always. And mm -hmm. I think it's one of the best ways to teach kids because everything should be, you know, just having a blast only. I think so. It's not about reading, right, because usually kids who are, like a three, four, five years old, not everybody can read in their language. <laughs> and that is why, so my teacher, my first teacher of English, 
she showed some of the you know the, the the toys small toys of the animals and they said this is a fox this is a dog okay can you see this is red fox and we repeat it after that so we just play we try to draw them also yeah, it was pretty funny you think, i like you it think, so much anna just out of the topic you think teaching kids is much easier than the teaching adults i can say so uh when i used to teach kids i can say it was maybe not exactly funny yeah, you know but it was like a, of course i used lots of entertaining play games you know just some of the parts but i can say that a lot a lot of power <laughs> yeah. just really it requires a lot, a lot of, of power even though i had the class about like 20 25 minutes so you always need to change activities because kids they get in bored so yeah, fast sure. they and they lose their attention they always yeah. need to keep their attention right and that is why you need to change activities yeah, like a 5 minutes really you do job. this one another 5 minutes you do another thing oh my god it's so hard to do that yeah so of course you can catch a lot of vibes from kids it's such a, a really so cool when they smile they laugh with you so you can sing songs you know you can just go bananas sometimes but anyway sure. i do prefer to teach adults yeah uh, i i i've been through this experience of teaching kids and uh, i think that uh, you should you should be You should be very creative first of all and you should be very active. I mean if you are lazy yeah. or something you can deal with kids because kids they need you all the time to be funny to them to be kind to them. Yes, if you get hard on them, yeah, you miss the whole process and um that's it. Yeah. I think that okay. but I think that, that that the kids are more into learning languages more than adults. I think they learn very Why? quickly especially vocabulary. Why do you think so? Um I think that that adults they make excuses okay they can make excuses they can say well i'm mm-hmm. busy i have this i have to do this but i don't think that's the case for for children children so kids are free can... always i don't have a lot of things to do okay so let's play yahoo that's right yeah. let's do it. it so for kids you kids can just always into. play games you can just sing to them you can just play a game with them and still they're learning the language at that time. but for for adults you'll have to do other work you have to motivate first of all uh for kids it's it's uh, yeah it's true that it's difficult to motivate them but you can motivate them by a song you can buy mm-hmm. a game but you can't do this with adults i think um uh, adults are very hard to be motivated actually yeah so that is why when uh, you know when you i mean teachers when they teach adults uh it's very important to get this um you know how to say exactly this the, the contact you know um it should be the same person you know you should be on the same page yeah i'm not talking about like only teacher but in general so people they need to understand why they do it so what's the main reason okay so they it's not exactly i think it's not right to say that teacher only need to motivate you know needs to motivate students i think the motivation should be inside and yeah, if sure. student knows what for knows the like i would like what else like a several goals for example i would like to study abroad i would like to get a new position in my work okay i would like to just understand what my favorite heroes from the tv series for example they are talking about so it just everything depends on the person yeah i think i agree with you actually that the motivation have to come within the inside of the person who's learning because it's him only who can find this why why is he learning the the language you can't tell him why you are learning language you can give him or explain to him the importance of the english language you can um you can motivate him in different ways but still the big goal the that why that big why it's the learner himself is responsible to to figure out and to find i think that's right in one of the reason which i usually just in one of the option okay why like is people why do people they need to study foreign languages i give an example when my student they watch such live streams then they, they are completely you know involved into it and i can say that i'm still appreciate you know just and i really grateful for my mom because she was the first person who decided you know because i was a kid i couldn't just decide anything but she really made me to start learning english and i said like oh no when i was just getting elder about like a 
15 maybe years old I say no I wouldn't like to be teacher at school I wouldn't like to be no it's not my cup of tea at all you know I, of course I had an experience you know uh working um in school in public school yeah but it was such a short period of time and just really I can say it's not my cup of tea one of the reasons it doesn't it, it doesn't mean that I like I didn't like to teach students at school. No, one of the reasons that unfortunately I couldn't choose the program, you know, uh, the study or educational program myself. Uh, and unfortunately I didn't have enough time for like each of the students I had in the class. Yeah. So this is such a big problem. You're but dealing when you have different learning classes, styles, you're dealing with different yeah. learning styles, different mentalities, different backgrounds. So it's really hard job. I I think it's um, pretty impossible. It's impossible, you know, to pay the same attention, the amount of attention to everyone. It's impossible to just do it. But if we are talking about individual classes, it's easy to do, okay? So you can, as the student, like what was the most difficult stuff, for example, yeah, during the, the class, and you can just study it again. I mean, just revise the same material. It's okay. So you can use various methods or approaches to help your students um, to be good at it, to be good at uh, like, uh, at, at, at what? I, I mean, just at reading and speaking, it doesn't matter, like different skills. And yeah. that is why it's the most important. Sure. So, Anna, it was really nice having you in this uh, graph. Actually, we didn't feel the time passing. It's it's almost yeah, one hour. Yeah, the time yeah. flies by so fast. Yeah, the time really? goes very oh fast. Yes, time flies. Yeah. So w one last question. I think this question, okay. I usually get this question. It's in the comments if you can read it. Are two hours a day enough to improve my English speaking? Uh, the same question in different versions I get most of the time. Can I learn English in three months? Can I learn English in one year? Is it enough to spend like this amount of time reading a book? Does it get me? Uh, does it give me like to speak English, or I can, or I need more time? Or is this true? Is this idea of specifying the time for the learning process? Is it? Is it true? Is does it? Is it helping? I think it depends. <laughs> so it depends the the how you do. I mean, how intensively? Okay, how just to learn it. Because sometimes it's really enough um, to study English about two days a day, but it, it depends what you do, okay? So you can only watch YouTube videos like the whole two hours and do nothing. Don't make any notes, for example. Don't revise the material. Don't repeat the same words. And I think it's going to be only like entertainment. That's it. But if you uh, just try to choose different not exactly a waste to study these two hours. I mean, for example, 40 minutes you read one article and you cherry up, cherry up some new words and phrases, you make sentences using the new lexis, it's okay. Then next 40 minutes you watch the video, um, you know, and try to find the same lexis which you just studied in the, the previous article, for example. It's a good one because before you um, improve your reading skills, you boost your laxes, then you boost your listening skills, you try to repeat, you use in shadowing. It's, it, anyway, it depends on how you do. So I can say the more, the better, okay? And if we're talking about, is it possible to learn English um, for one year? No, it's impossible. I think so the whole, you know, this, this sentence, to learn English for three months, to learn, it's impossible to learn language, okay? You can improve it, it's true. It's really true because even though people who have proficiency level, it doesn't mean that they can understand everything, every single word they know. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't mean at just, all. Anna, one, one point about what she said, we should be yes. specific about this because this term, this, we use this phrase, I want to learn English. What do you mm -hmm. want exactly? I mean, uh, yeah. you should be specific. You need to clarify. Yeah, yeah you need to right. clarify. Because our goal shouldn't be like very broad. For example, if you tell me I want to learn how to go to a hospital and to talk to a doctor or how to go to the yeah. restaurant and order something, and I want to learn this and this and this and this. Yeah, this case, I think you can do it. You can do it in two months. You can do it in three months. But to leave it like this broad goal, like I want to learn English, 
I don't, uh, I don't think that you will learn English even if you spend your whole time. You will, not, you will never stop learning. I'm still learning. You're still learning. Even native speakers now, I don't think that they know all the words in the dictionary. They don't know. So yeah, you know, sure. I, I guess like a last year I had the class. Um, not a class. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I can't just concentrate. And say. Okay. I had the live stream with the English speaker, you know, his name is Chris, I guess you know him, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the English tutor, right, the, the Chris, um, he lives in Nashville, and he, like, I can't say that he really surprised me by saying that every single day, native speaker guy, okay, that he, every Born single day, he catches new speaker. words, new words, every single day, native speaker, so what are you waiting, what are you just really a, Guys, yeah. waiting for that you're going to learn uh, English for one year? Come on, are you kidding me? Of course, you can improve your English. You yeah. can speak more fluently. It's okay. That's good. But please, don't make such goals that, like, yeah. I need to learn English for you three can months. Achieve, or, yeah. Let's say you can achieve specific yeah. goals in the learning yeah. process. You that's can right. achieve it. Yeah. You will have no because problem people with say learn for I like the I like the, the, the goals, like... In the next three months, I want to have no pro. I want to have no problem with the present simple tense and the present perfect mm -hmm. tense. I like this goal because yeah. it's, it's, possible, it's realistic right? and it can be applied mm -hmm. actually. And the next yeah. month, you can specify another goal, and uh, like this, you will achieve great things. Yeah, absolutely. So your your mission will be accomplished one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. If sure. you just make such goals, it's okay. And of course, it depends on the goals, right? Because, um, I mean, if you would like to uh, pass the exam, international exam, of course, you need to work hard and you need more than two hours a day to study, right? And you need just more practice. And it, maybe it's really enough one year for some people, or maybe it's not enough one year. You need to like a two or three years too for preparation. Depends, well, guys. So that's it. That's it. Well, Anna, it's been nice actually having this conversation with you. It was really helpful. I think it was really Likewise. helpful. And uh, the people here, the followers, are everyone, uh, Anna is making videos. She's a great teacher. She's teaching online. You can join her on her uh, Instagram page. 